All right, everybody, welcome back to the Get It Done podcast. I'm Joe Zanke, your host, co-founder, COO of On Demand Storage, who sponsors our show. And today I'm with my guest, Kate Stewart of Bobble Stockings. Kate, how's it going? I am good. How I'm are doing you? great. I'm doing great. I'm, fi- I'm, I'm I'm really excited to have you here. You know, we were just talking about how we uh, both, at some point or another, were in the storage industry. Um, but now you kind of are doing something completely different, and I'm looking forward to hearing your story. Well, thanks. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm a little different than self-storage now. I am into the miniature Christmas stocking game, which I've yet to meet another person in the same industry. You are the first on the podcast <laughs> in the miniature <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Um, I have a, I've kind of, I shouldn't say that because people are going to, I'm going to say monopoly and people are going to be like, oh, I got to get in this mm, business. Be careful. Um, but I sell, I sell miniature Christmas stockings. Those are awesome. Here. So they are the size of your hand. They're um, hand stitched needlepoint made in Haiti for fair trade. Um, and it's basically a Christmas tradition I grew up with where after all your presents have been opened, you go to the tree, you get your bobble stocking down and the final gift of Christmas or clue to it is in the stocking. So it's like a save the best for last, grand finale, oh, super awesome yeah. memories um, that I grew up with my parents doing. And then also we now employ about 600 women full-time for fair trade in Haiti. Oh my God. <laughs> what a, oh man, that was a huge, uh, huge step. So you have 600 people, you know, who are, and now they, um, what's their role in the, just helping you produce the stockings? So, so all of our stockings are needlepoint. So when you look at them, there's about 4,000 stitches in each one, and those are hand stitched. Um, I actually came across, I started my business in China. Um, I went there when I was pregnant with my son, and I found out I wasn't allowed to meet the people making my product, which for me was like a very big red flag. I I have to meet who's making it. So I spent about a year searching for fair trade, um, talked to people all over the world, and then I just got lucky one night and I found Good Threads Needlepoint which is owned by David Palmer, whose dad is also in storage or in yep. moving. Um, and David Palmer was down there and he was making belts, key fobs, dog collars. And I wrote him and I just said, hey, could you make this product? And he said, yes. So I flew down there to meet them. And there's no hiding the stitchers in Haiti. Like they are oh. everywhere. There's a... So right then we had like, I think we had 82 team members. And now three years later, we've got about 600. That's incredible. That's awesome. So. Tell me about like, um, like when you first got into this, so you got, you got, you were doing, you know, give me a little bit of a background just on your story. So you were in the self storage industry and then at what point did you make this leap? Um, so I have like one of those weird jumpy backgrounds of an ADD person. Um, I ran a bakery, then I worked at a children's hospital. Then I lived in Panama for two years, running a study abroad. Uh, and then I came home from Panama and my dad, who's in the self storage industry, he's actually in private equity. So he takes people's money and buys properties and then has third party management run them. Um, and so his focus has been self, he started, he got in the self storage game in I think 1991, like back in the day, um, <laughs> still has some of those properties too. And they'd yep, be great, sure. but he, um, so his nine or his 72 year old, um, secretary was getting married to someone she found on the internet. Wow, what a world we're in. And there was a spot. <laughs> so that's how I got into self storage. And basically dad was like, my dad was like, okay, you're gonna work here. This is what Beverly's been doing. And she's 72. So mind you, like I, pr- I made processes very quickly, right? I, I figure out, he was like, if you can figure out how to do her 40 hour week job in 10 hours, that's fine. And so that was my goal. <laughs> So while I worked in self storage, I had two babies. I brought them to work with me every day. We had uh, we had pack and plays like cribs at the yep. at the office, like in the coffee room. Um, so I was balancing that, and I always wanted to start this tradition because I thought every woman had a bobble stocking growing up. My mom had one. Okay. Uh, so when I got married, I said, "When do I get my bobble stocking?" And my husband said, "What are you talking <laughs> about?" And I said, "You know what? The good presents come in." And he was like, "No, that's not a thing." So I Googled it. It didn't show up. So I kind of knew that I was always going to do this, but I didn't realize um, when I started it that my team, the people making it would be the most, would be my driving right. force, right? Like, so I wake up every morning and I can, se- I sell, I sell a lot of stockings, but it's because I know people depend on me for food. So it's easy. It's an easy switch. I love that, that motivation. And, and you, you, I can tell you're a natural salesman. You got that personality, but um, <laughs> I'd, I'd, buy, I'd buy some bobble stockings. The first time I saw it, I was like, I need to get one of those. Those are awesome. 
<laughs> you know what's funny about it though, and maybe people don't realize this, is that like I've had sales, so the bakery, I was in charge of sales. Um, and then in Panama, I was in charge of selling to students. And I was our worst salesman in Panama. Wow. I was the worst, I was, if I had a phone interview, and I kept all the, I kept uh, metrics on everybody, because I love metrics, right? Um, and I was by far, the, like if you got me on the phone, like chances are you weren't coming to Panama. Because I was like so, too honest. I'm too, I'm too like, it's gonna be hard, and it's gonna be this, right, and it's gonna be right. that. And like, that, I was not good at sales then. And now I sell bobble stuff. I can sell, but I can sell miniature eighty-five dollars stocking all day long. Well, you tell the story really well, and the story is everything. You know what I mean? That's that's just sales. So that's awesome. So, you got the. So, wh how do you how do people find like where, where when you first started? You know, you figured out how to manufacture them. Um, you figured out how to get your product. Um, now, where did you start positioning this and marketing it? And, and you know, how how are you getting out in front of people? This is a good point. And, and like, I have like on Instagram on reels, if people are, if, if people are starting companies, I have a whole reel about like how to start a company because I, you need help, right? Like you need as much of this question as possible. Um, I launched on the floor. Like I actually launched my company on the floor of America's Mart, which is the largest wholesale show in the world. And luckily it's here in Atlanta. Wow. Um, so I, I think it started at 10 a.m. and at 10.06, I had to, I had to slide a credit card for the first time and pretend like I'd done it a million times. <laughs> um, and that was the first store that bought was a store in Chicago, who's still a customer. Um, so that first year we were in 36 stores and I picked up, I think 35 of them on the floor at America's Mart. Um, and that's, if, if somebody's looking to go into wholesale, that's the show, that's, that's where you wanna be. There's a floor called High Design, it's juried, which means like it's 50% on your product, 50% on, um, your booth design, so you have to have like a pretty bougie yeah. booth. Um, <laughs> just fake it till you make it. I just kept dropping my best friend's a, kind of a renowned interior designer here in Atlanta, and I kept like putting her name in all the emails and like you hyperlinking. Do it. Like, she is designing. You gotta do it. That's awesome. <laughs> they let me in, um, and now they're like super proud. Like now, America's Mart. I love America's Mart so much, but they like take a lot of pride in bobble stockings, even though I kind of bamboozled them at the beginning. <laughs> so they now love me. Um, I'm in, I think I'm in their marketing videos actually, <laughs> but all right. So launch there. And, and I think that's a good point too, about, um, when you launch a company, you're going to pitch all the time. You're going to pitch. I pitched probably, you know, hundred, 200 stores and we pivoted. We used to only be for moms and now we're for every, everybody. And re pitching to those stores has been probably the biggest challenge was that I would wanted to pitch to so many stores when I first started. And I kind of wish I'd pitched to a little bit less um, because I've had to like re-educate everybody. So you can't take failure at first, like it's not failure. It's like, you're kind of lucky um, if you get your story, you know, like if you get a whole year under your belt and then you start pitching a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't, I mean, it's funny because like growing is everybody's, this, you know, dream and desire when they're having a company, but growing too fast can be something that, that becomes a, a very big challenge not not only from like a I mean in your industry it could be from a manufacturing standpoint it could be from a like you said a, a an education standpoint you know you don't have to just realign your relationship with three or four stores you have to really realign them with 50 or, or 100 like hey guys hey guys wait it changed <laughs> it pivot it changed can you can you help me yeah. and most of them have been pretty cool about it but some of them are like I don't I don't like you uh, <laughs> So it's good. So now we're going into year four. Um, so like I said, we were like in 36 stores the first year. We're in 262 stores wow. this year. Um, so we've really, we've really grown, but that was a snowball. I mean, that was 32 to 90 to 140 to 262. So like, you just kind of like pick up once, you know, like once you get that snowball yep. effect, it's wild. And then you wanted to talk about online sales. I mean, that's, we sold, no, let me see. I sold 18 stockings online my first year. This year alone, we've sold over, I've got it written down. We sold over 6,000 stockings on the website. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> it's, it is great. It's very surprising. Like, oh, my watch dings when I make a sale and I'm like, who are you? What are you doing? <laughs> uh, but um, on that point is I will say hiring a PR agency was the best thing I ever yeah. did. Um, I love my PR agency, um, LBH PR Co out of St. Simons. They are amazing, but they got me in with these influencers and Instagram influencers. Anybody ever doubts influencers? Influencers, 
they are worth their weight in gold. Um, they, they really do practice what they preach and they're the best. Um, but use a PR company to talk to them because otherwise you're going to be paying a lot of money and such. Gotcha. Gotcha. I, I, that's really good advice. You know what I mean? That's really good advice for anybody out there that's selling products. And I've been talking to more and more people who are doing this stuff. And, and one thing that you gotta, at a certain point, you know, honestly, more often than I ever thought, um, let go and relinquish some responsibility, right? Like, so you don't need to always be the one that's marketing your product. Like you don't, you don't need to be the ones posting the Instagram ads. You don't need to be, your company should be doing stuff like that. You know what I mean? Your company should be marketing. They should be obviously keeping, um, you know, really clean books, um, from an accounting standpoint, but like as an entrepreneur, you don't need to do all of that. Honestly, it's, if you, your goal should be to get to a point where you can start hiring people to do, you know, I mean, how are you and I ever going to, you know, be better than a professional PR agency at going and, and promoting our product and finding people. So they're worth their weight in gold if they're doing their job the right way. And you know, just Finding the right people is super important. People ask me how I found them. I was like, I interviewed three. One made me cry, <laughs> like telling me I was like not good at my job. One didn't even answer, like told me to, anyway, they didn't really even answer the DMs and Instagram. And I was like, no, thank you. And then the third one came back with like a full on pitch about like my company. And I was like, well, that was a clear, that was a clear winner. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. And so, but that's also another thing you're talking about experts. I do wave, I, I do a lot too much. I love, I'm too micromanagey, but, um, but I think it is, it is hard. And sometimes you, if you let an expert tell you what to do, then you find out that expert didn't really know what they were talking about in terms of your business. <laughs> so second opinions are definitely worth they are. doing. No, all the time. I mean, it's, <laughs> you, you're totally right. You're totally right. You know, you gotta, um, I mean, you just got to manage the relationship, but you know, once you get them going on what you want them to do, you know, just let them off the leash and let them go. That's oh, kind of yeah. like the name of the game. Yeah. My PR company knows that I will, sometimes I'll be like, why are we sending this to them? And they'll like, send me a very good answer back. And I'm like, sorry, I was sassy. <laughs> like, you know what you're doing. I love that. So do, you've, you've been doing this, um, you know, talk to me. This is a question that I've been asking um, a couple of people that I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit new to this world, you know, of retailing and, and selling online. Um, do you guys promote your company on Amazon or is that something that you're looking to do or is there a reason that you don't or anything like that? So I, the first year I got on Amazon and we didn't sell anything. And then I was like, that's because an eight, an $85 miniature hand stitch fair trade stocking is not going to sell on Amazon. And it just upsets my stores. Mostly my stores are like, why are you there? Um, so we took it down pretty quickly and I don't really have the urge. I don't even use Amazon pay for my website anymore because Amazon pay was so convoluted. Like you couldn't tell which, which order mm -hmm. it was for. Have you, have you talked to anybody else about Amazon? I pay? haven't, no, not about Amazon pay. No, no. Um, I just find that in it cause Shopify allows you like if on my Shopify site, you can, sh you can check out with Shopify, PayPal, you know, or type in your credit card. And Amazon's also offered on there, but it doesn't. Anyway, just, just wondering, just wondering if anybody else has this <laughs> No, well, I mean, honestly, the what I've heard, you know, some people say um, is that they go, the, you know, once you go the wholesale route, which is, you know, a fantastic route, and, and you have a great story behind, you know, why you did that and, and what the what the meaning is, but it's tough to to go back and do, you know, the Amazon route because, you know, you, you have great relationships with these people who are selling your product on the ground. Um, honestly, Amazon's kind of like a, just a terrifying beast in itself. Um, and so, you know, you do, and, and there's certain products that, that are meant for it and there's certain aren't and, and yours might be price point. Um, uh, but it's also something that, you know, Amazon can, can tend to commoditize things, um, that, you know, are special. Um, and you, you know, you want your, your, your product to be special and, and, if you throw it on there, it becomes just one of a million. It comes easy to it, knock off. Easy to knock off, but also just one of the other, you know, stockings that are on there, which yeah. it's not. It's not, you know. Well, like David, like Good Threads, like my my manufacturing team does belts, key fobs, dog collars, and those are on Amazon, and they do great mm -hmm. on Amazon because people know what they're buying. People are buying a belt, they're buying the dog collar. Um, the stockings, like I will tell you, as somebody who sell, like I go to shows and I will sell. And no one just walks by a, t a table full of $85 stockings and goes, oh, I need that. Yeah. You hear the story and then you want it and you buy four yep. of them. Yep. 
but you don't just pick up an $85 stocking and go, oh, I can put a gift card in this. Like, it's not, it's, that's not the vessel. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully in 10 years, though, it will be, you know, hopefully in 10 years, people will be like, oh, that's a bobble stocking, you yeah. know, and I won't have to tell, I tell the story thousands of yep. times a year. I don't mind. I, don't I love it. Sure. But the goal is that one day they'll just go, oh, like Elf on the Shelf. You know that story. Everyone knows the story sure. of Elf on yep. the Shelf, but they are only... I think they're 15 years old now. Um, and it took them seven years to get to like the turn, like where they had the Macy's, they had a float in the Macy's Day Parade or the Thanksgiving Parade. And they were like, there. <laughs> That's legit. Yeah. That's like kind of the <laughs> pinnacle right there. Um, for me, I always wanted like the, we, my company, On Demand Storage, does, um, we do a lot of work in colleges. And so I, I'm just waiting for the day that we do the On Demand Storage Bowl. And then, like the bowl game for the for college football, and then I'm out. <laughs> I'll, I'll just... I love it. <laughs> Done. Yeah, I want like University of Texas and and Florida State playing in the on demand storage bowl. Ooh, wait, what's what's your passion for Florida State? Well, no, I just I, I don't actually have one. Um, I'm actually more of a UF guy. If I was gonna, if I was gonna. Oh, I went. To oh, State. okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I didn't. Mean... No, we don't need to battle. Um. We actually do work with the University of Florida, and we don't with Florida State. So, um, but that's neither here nor there. You want them in your bowl, and you want them to lose? Is that what you're? No, no, me? they can be Texas. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I love that. That's such like a like I've never that's never even entered my mind of like pinnacle of success is having a bowl game. But I totally get that. Like now I'm now I'm thinking like a bobble stockings bowl. That actually sounds. It would be good. good. That would be a great one. Yeah. yeah. Even if like two, you know, Division Four teams play, I'm fine with it. Just, just give me a bowl. <laughs> just to check off the bucket list, like, do you know who I am? I'm yeah, bowl. exactly. <laughs> well, okay, this has been this has been yeah. awesome. I really enjoyed meeting you. I've, I've really enjoyed hearing the story. Thank you for coming on here. Thank you for even sharing not only just your story but some insights into what it's like to own and run a store and a business. I mean, that's kind of what the whole podcast is about: is just teaching people, you know, how to become entrepreneurs and and listening to other people's stories and hopefully being inspired. So, um, you know, good for you. I, I, I've really enjoyed hearing everything and, and you have such a great personality. You know, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I really, so where can people it. find your product if they want to look it up and buy some for the holiday season? Ooh, uh, let's see there. We're in a bunch of stores, about 250 stores. So you contact your local gift store that has a baby registry, a baby, uh, a wedding registry, anything like that. You can ask them if there's bobble stockings, and if they don't, they can order them from me. Um, we're in Saks, New York right now on Saks wow. Online. Nice. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of the pinnacle uh, engine. You can just type in a Google search, and my website will show up, but also a bunch of my small mm -hmm. stores. They sell them on their website, so if you're like, I want to support a store in my area, um, you can usually find it on the internet. Beautiful. Awesome. Kate, this has been great. I, uh, I look forward to keeping up with you. I look forward to, um, you know, I'm going to... I'm really into your product, so you know I'll, you'll you'll probably have a new customer after this. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye.